has a number of capabilities across the layered missile defence picture. Now this includes space. I'm joined by Wallace Lockery, who's the Vice President of Space Systems at Raytheon. So Wallace, why is space important in that multi-layered missile defence picture? So space is what we would call the ultimate high ground. So when it comes to detecting missile launches and tracking them, space becomes the one place that's the most persistent and capable to track them across their entire flight. Especially now with the threat environment where it is, with the ranges of some of these threats, with the signatures of these threats and the maneuverability, space is absolutely critical for missile defense. And um, let's talk about some of the projects that Raytheon's involved in. Um, so one of these is a relatively new one, Blackjack, um, which you're working on with DARPA. Um, can you explain about that project in particular? So the Blackjack program is intended to test and demonstrate new ways of detecting and tracking missile launches. Traditionally, the mission has been done at geosynchronous orbit, and they're looking at leveraging what's happening in low Earth orbit with the proliferation of many of these commercial constellations and trying to figure out is it possible to provide the same level of capability in a proliferated low Earth orbit constellation um, at, at a different price point and, and with the same type of capability. So we're really excited. We're working on the payload side of that program um, and we're headed towards some initial concept reviews over the next year or so. And obviously that's not just the only program you're working on, you're also working on something that's in the geostationary orbit phase and that's with the US Air Force and other industry members, so if you could tell us about that as well. Sure, as I mentioned earlier, geosynchronous orbit has been where we've traditionally had our strategic missile warning large-scale programs, the Defense Support Program, the US Air Force Defense Support Program, the Space-Based Infrared System, and now it's the next-gen overhead persistent IR, next gen OPIR, block zero, <laughs> geo, so that's a mouthful. Yeah. Um, and we're working with uh, the prime contractor Lockheed Martin for the, the first number of those satellites and going towards a critical design review to replace the legacy program, which is the Sibbers program. So it is the next step in the large operational program. And then when you take blackjack as looking at new types of ways to do it from low earth orbit, um, but also maintaining the capability that the U.S. and its allies rely on um, is what the next-gen OPIR program is. And um, both of these programs, I understand, you're kind of working on them quite rapidly, quite a demanding timeline. How is Raytheon able to meet that timeline and utilize its expertise? Yeah, our formula is pretty simple. It's, it's the one company and all of our domain knowledge in missile warning and missile defense. Uh, the history that we have in building the payloads that we've built for Missile Defense Agency and many of our other customers in the infrared. But probably most importantly is a lot of investment that we've made, um, hundreds of millions of dollars over the last 10 years in really, really trying to invest in specific technologies like focal plane arrays, optics, electronics, and, and bringing that to bear for our customers um, with affordable, fast solutions, but also that they can rely on and they know will work. Well, thank you so much for that, Wallace, and we will continue to follow both of those programs. Great.